Hello and welcome to episode 3 of MME Full Chat. I am joined with Asil Yassin. Have I got that correctly? Yeah, more or less. Oh, is yeah. that who you are? Also, oh, you know. From I Tomini Classics. Was. Just sitting there in the Let's middle. Let's try to get this intro done without All right, sorry. <laughs> We're at Tomini Classics uh, in lovely Barsha, where you can see pretty much every car you've ever dreamed of since you were a small child. Al Barsha 2. Al Barsha 2. It's on Google Maps. Come and check so them out. So much better lovely. than Barsha 1. Oh, yeah. 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 Seriously. I don't, don't know what they're doing around there. Seriously. Sorry, intro. Those, those people. And the intro is now awesome. concluded. Welcome. We will we'll be coming here quite a bit, so it's quite a nice place to be, because they've got a lovely Ferrari Testarossa behind us. I'm taking Testarossa, that later. We have a Testarossa. Okay, it's a Testarossa. I'm, take, I'm taking that home later. Yeah. For we right. make special price. <laughs> and the reason we're here today to kick off the uh, Tomini episodes is because we want to talk about classic cars because we love classic cars a long time in the making no honestly quite glad that you guys are that you guys are here it's been a long time in the making and that we've known you for how long now since the beginning since inception um, <laughs> pretty much actually yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, before I joined so even well you know, to be honest before this thing was here yeah. Yeah. before yeah. this thing was here we knew these guys and we knew the cars that you had the first time a car was exhibited over at the Amar Classics which was a, a Lamborghini Mura yellow one which mm. somebody broke the steering on, on during the, the three day or mm. four day weekend that was happening that's there. a very expensive <laughs> piece of generosity it was yeah. repaired but it was very expensive yeah. things are chairman the gentleman who owns uh, the business and the entire collection and my employer um, he does like to share the cars with people. But yes, I think that, that, yes. But I, I think told that him was, he shouldn't. I think that's just, that was his. I told him he should. That was his first. Most, mostly with me. Yeah. <laughs> that was his first uh, lesson. I think that. Yeah, there's a limit to how drunk she could be. Because things when people are getting inside and out of Perhaps. cars. Slightly louder so the mic can hear. When, when people get inside. <laughs> look at it. When people get in and out of cars, yeah. uh, they, it's a furry they, hamster they the use table, the yeah. steering wheel as, 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 as something to hold on to. Even my dad did my Lancia, yeah. and it made me cringe, you know. But it, it's Is just, your Lancia okay? Uh, and the tea is here. Hello, thank you, Akash. Oh, I will take my hot water. We'll put that Fine. quietly there. This Don't put the tray down, just yeah. give this to is me. For That'd be great. Here we go, thanks. No, we got it the wrong way around. Oop. And then, uh, you can, oh, yeah. this is a tea, yeah, this is a, this is a coffee. See, is it Nef- Nescafe on there, you see? Can we oh. just have, uh, Akash, can we have the, the tissues? See, Sorry, it people. It says Nescafe on the cup, right? And it hasn't got, it's got tea in it. Can you have the, the tissues, please? And this thank one. You. This yep. one's a teacup. We apologize for your weekly right. episode of TV. This, and this teacup has got coffee in it, so it's utterly confusing. It Hospitality. Totally to me, it's like all the Ferraris here have Lamborghini engines in them. What is going on? They don't. So anyway, so, before, so, hang on, so, so I'll tell you so what. Okay. Hang on, I'll tell you what. Before we get into this, because what we're going to do now is what we're going to do is we're going to try and define what a classic car is and what better place to try and do that than here at Tamini. But before we do that, let's just do a quick 30 second introduction of what is Tamini. Yeah. So Tamini Classic started as a private collection. I mean, really, it started with just one Jaguar E-Type, um, which we recently bought, bought back. Uh-huh. Yeah, you um, sold it and bought it back, because you saw it. you had this E-Type, which I was told, we're never going to sell that. Ever, and then ever, you sold ever, it, yeah. and like, oh no, we yeah. want it back now. Um, Are you paying more for it than you sold it for? Uh, <laughs> I bet. Uh, ask me no questions, I'll tell you no lies. Um, but yeah, we, we bought back uh, the E-Type, and that's, uh, that's, that's not for sale. Uh, Again, really? I, I, yeah, I want to keep that. Really, really not for sale. Well, uh, you know, um, nothing is ever not for sale, <laughs> right? <laughs> Make so me enough for I can't refuse. You know. What does Tumini do? So it started out as a private collection. The collection got bigger. Then um, our chairman realized that this could also be a business opportunity, so he can enjoy his cars, have a foundation, have a have a setup uh, where we can the cars can be maintained and can drive. When he first drove his E-Type, he what on earth is going on? He's never driven a classic car before. Call that PRO. What on earth have you done with a car and everything? But then, bit by bit, we, we you know we learn continuously along the way. Uh, you're spilling your coffee, um, and so eventually, uh, eventually we. <laughs> That's because you put it in a teacup. That's why <laughs> <laughs> it's your damn fault. Um, and so, um, and well, so. I didn't spill it on my shoes. So first episode. Right. And then it's. Uh, uh, yeah, and then so so then the decision was made in uh, late 2012, early 2013 to, to buy this land and, and establish um, the foundations of the business, which is our, this, our, this our is, building. Can I just say, this is a dream, this is, this is any car guy's dream facility. Mm. Because the, the owner, as, you, as, we, as we say, is actually, his office is up there. Mm-hmm. So he can basically sit up there and he can see, he can just keep an eye on these cars. Precisely. It's, 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 it's a car guy's dream come true. You look at your it? toy box from your office while your bark <laughs> is playing in the background. Uh, what is annoying is there's a beam right in the middle, so he can't see everything. Lock it down. But, uh, the building will fall down, won't but, it? Uh, when, I, when, I, when I first joined, it was before, the, before this place opened, obviously. Then we opened up in October 2014. Um, I'm 
I expect it to sell two, three cars a year. I'm very pleasantly surprised at, at how many cars we're selling per year. It's fantastic. We're meeting great people, with the exception of you two. We're, um, you know. You didn't say that loudly enough. Exactly. Back here, I'll tell you what. Um, Can I point out that he actually sold me a car because I am. There's a, there's a sucker born every minute. <laughs> And that wasn't that, a hard gig, though. That, that really, was the that easiest thing. That wasn't really a hard gig in was human it? history. No, no. no. <laughs> he, he, the thing is, um, because of the way uh, the way Tamini Classics was marketed before, many, many people, excuse me, many people didn't know that it was actually a business. Yeah. Um, so, so any car you come here and, come, but we're not talking about honest, cheap cars but, either. But are to we? be honest, I think that is a, that is a bit confusing still now because a lot of people still not aren't aware of whether this is actually mm. a business or is just a private collection. Uh, that, that's what we're trying to change because because it, it is both. Mm. Um, so you know, using words like sold on Instagram. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the other well, the other day we were here a few uh, about a week ago, weren't we? Mm -hmm. And um, so I, and now right now. You guys can't see this, but maybe we'll put in some pictures later or we'll just do a quick video sweep around. Right now, you've got all the Ferraris out. Celebrate the 70th anniversary. Celebrating the 70th anniversary, right. Yes. So uh, when I went back from here, I put up a little post to say that, well, you know, all the, all the Ferraris are out. Go and check them out. And, and a couple of guys did comment on there. It's like, oh, can we actually go there? Wow. You, know, so you know what I mean? So there's still that aura yeah. of, you know, is, you know do we, how do we get in there? Can we go in there? So how are do we people allowed get in there? Right? So, okay, so that, the that's, that's, that's why we arranged the Tamini night tours, which we hold sort of on a quarterly basis. Mm. It's just to let people know that, look, the doors are always open. We prefer appointments if you're looking to buy a car. Yeah. Um, because but if you're looking to look? If you're looking to look, marhaba ah. big. Um, as long, uh, what I tell people is as long as the sun is up and as long, or, or as long as the lights are on in the, showroom, uh, yeah. in the showroom, people are welcome in. And I've had a few friends who've tested it out in car groups and said, yep, yep, it wasn't lying. So when you come in here, the rules are be respectful. Obviously, don't spill your coffee on the floor. Yeah, yeah of course. Uh, Shit, am I going to be objected now? You Certainly. That's why, objected or objected. that's why I'm not looking I'm at you anymore. I'm going to be ejected. Anymore. I would um, be objected to and then... Obviously, ejected. don't scrape your jeans on the back of all the cars because these are pristine. Half of these cars here have incredibly low jeans. mileage and other ones have just really low mileage. What's the lowest mileage car you've got? The lowest mileage car in the collection would now probably be the NSX. It's 68 miles. 68, 68 miles from new. 68 miles from It was 65 at the last night tour, but then there's just a adorable chap uh, uh, and, and the cars do a, a short uh, exercise anyway and so this chap who knew more about the car than, than, than I could ever dream and I just thought right he deserves to be in this car more than I do so, so it's an interesting word you just hang use on there, I exercise. deserve to be in this car more than anybody else. no he deserves it more Inter right. interesting, interesting word you use there exercise so uh, are these cars all driven absolutely absolutely, really? absolutely except for the I mean even the uber low mileage cars we take them out once a year at least I mean not for a long distance uh, depending on the mileage, so you don't go into like uh, Souk Al Bahar and pick up like a coffee cup. Do you know? No? no, I've never driven any of our cars. Which one's Souk Al Bahar? That's on the boulevard. That, yeah? That's in Dubai Mall. Okay, yeah. The only time we've taken cars there is for the show, the ECCF. Well, our test, my test drive route is nowhere near. It's not Sheikh Zayed Road. It's not. It's a secret. No, Before. not really. <laughs> Actually, it would be great if. I mean, I'm more than happy to see spotters on our route, uh, hoping a point to, to see well, cars. Still be careful what you uh, wish for. Uh, is what they say. <laughs> um, but no, yeah, we take it. Shall we talk very quickly about Chopard Rally? Sure. Yeah. So if you want to give us your plug for Showpower Rally, what's yep. Showpower Rally? Um, the show, the Showpower is a watch brand, as some what's people call it. Oh, right, a watch. A chronometer, a timepiece. Yeah, time yeah. yes, okay. um, so they make it. You've got a fancy watch. What have you got? Uh, I've got I've, this is the only watch I ever wanted. It's the James Bondish watch, the Omega Seamaster. Oh, right, right, right. And right. I just think it's. Is Brosnan James Bond? It no, started, no, I think it started with Brosnan. I thought it was Dalton. No, no, no. They're all Omegas now. They're all Omegas. No, I think either Brosnan. I think Brosnan was the first uh, maybe not with Goldeneye but yeah and I just thought it was a beautiful watch I went inside a boutique when I was much younger and I thought right when I get a, when I get a job I'm going get to so, get me that watch so Fair enough. but um, so yeah Chopin are, are makers of fine timepieces and chronometers yeah. um, and they're organising the inaugural um, uh, they've initiated the inaugural Dubai rally with the help of Pure Drive Automotive uh, we're helping out as much as we can when will that now. be? Uh, the 10th and the 11th of November so it's going to be two days of beautiful driving people come and see it? Uh, yeah, I highly recommend they do. Um, the starting and ending point on both days is going to be at the Armani Hotel, because uh -huh. um, Imar are involved as well. Cool. Um, main sponsor is Ahmed Suzuki and Sons, days. and we are we are bronze sponsors. On both days. Two days of uh, driving on two different but equally brilliant routes. That again, pure, pure drive all, same place. pure drive automotive did about four thousand kilometers of, of, yeah. of researching the roads. So yeah. should be. Did two. they just turn up with like, can we have one of your Enzos and we'll do some wrecking for like four thousand <laughs> kilometers? They did it in the, in the Picanto actually, uh, but we, we, we yeah. We, I've we, actually saw this Picanto. 
It's a it's a perfect recce car. So, uh, so when is this again? 10th to 11th of November. 10th and 11th of November. Mm -hmm. Just before the Dubai Motor Show. Just before the Dubai Motor um, Show. Yeah. The, there's also going to be a gala dinner on the last evening where we're going to be auctioning a couple or three of our cars. Some of the three cars, huh? Some of the proceeds will go to so charity. So you can you will accept any offer for this? No, no, it's not, no. There's going to be a reserve <laughs> price. Once, uh, yeah, there's going to be a reserve roll price. Roll up, roll up. No reserve. <laughs> and over your money, it's yours. Um, and some of the proceeds will go to charity as well. Cool. So how can people get involved? Um, well, there are about three. Uh, there aren't many slots left. They might actually all be full. Um, Who should get in touch with you or young Miguel, hermano, as they call him? No, if they want to. Hermano. Me too. Hasta la muerte. Um, I, I'd recommend the. Uh, it's my favorite sentence in Spanish. Probably favorite in the world. Um, uh, the, the, uh, getting we've in been touch watching with, a lot of narcos. Uh, getting in touch with Pure Drive Automotive would probably be the best uh, channel, and get a, a car that's younger than 1987. And that's where interesting. Can, younger than 1987. That's the cutoff, right? Mm -hmm. But what if it's a Cressida? 86 Cressida wagon. Or is there a taste bar as well? So how's it going, Shazad? What's your <laughs> name? You're well? You're well? I love the glasses. You see, we are sitting in Tomini, and you know, I think there's a certain... Is there a website? There's, uh, there's going to be a landing page for the Shop I Rally, but for the, for the time being, you can visit Sh Pure Drive Automotive. Get in, get in touch with them. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's .com. Uh, okay. Yeah. Plug-free zone. We've now finished our plugs. Yes, I think so. So, cool. All right. What defines a classic car? Go. Anybody. Well, you know what? We did put that question out on our. We ask Facebook you as page. we always do. And um, so let's let's just run. The, what I suggest we do? How many minutes? How many minutes have we got left in this? We segment? got about nine minutes. So, so what I'll do is I'll just run it through a few of these, and then we'll try and define it ourselves. And then the second question we asked some of our readers was, what classic car would they get? Mm. So we'll run through some of those as well. Um, so many parameters to that question, though. Yeah, I'll just go through this. So Rahul Jones says a classic car equals a car that is older than its owner. No. To which I replied, depends how old the owner yeah, is. My car really. is all younger than no, me. Yeah. No, no, I mean, you looked at. I mean, I was watching all the Goodwood revival stuff over the weekend. I was Wasn't just that watching. the greatest thing it's ever? Amazing, absolutely amazing. The races were phenomenal, but some of the guys there were like, you know, 70, 80, 90. I mean, they were there when the original '57 <laughs> Grand Prix happened. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And those cars are most definitely classic. So yeah. you can't say that the cars are older than yeah, me. Yeah, but I don't like that's that modern really classics, applies. right? So where would you fall on modern classics? Well, I, 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 I we're, we're not defining it yet. We're not defining. Oh, sorry, not defining. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're going to what people have said for it. So Chris Howden, Chris Howden, hello. Oh, are we going to comment on every comment, sorry? Or we're we're just, I'm just going to read some of these out. Well, so well, Chris Howden says, ones. a classic is something that does strange things to your inside <laughs> when you see it or hear it. For example, an Audi Quattro S1, five cylinders of pure shouty flame spitting stuff, which is in today's standard a grandpa but can match the new kids on the block. Plus, that unusual note New is kids cool. on the block, I remember that. TVRs represent V8 crew, the Subaru mm. 555 flat four turbo, uh, turbo tones, Mazda RX-7 Wankel motor, uh, and he lists a whole bunch of cars. Oh, Although, what? I think there's a, there's a, the American cars, I think, represent V8s to me, I would always say. But there is always the old, uh, the Buick V8, which... Uh, which which is in everything. Of, uh, well, yeah, in the British UK, cars, I mean, yeah. Rover used that for ages, didn't they? How many years they used that for? for four long, decades? Then, um, uh, until quite recently, they used mm. Defender, it was in Range Rovers. Um, it was in the Discovery. It mm. was a modified version of the Discovery. I love that it. engine was one of the most. It's been in boats. Yeah. It's incredibly robust. I love that TVR made their own engines. That's what got them bust. But, but they, they also have a Rover V8 at one they point. I wouldn't be surprised. They did for a while. Yeah. Yeah. And then they, they had the TVR V8. Yeah. Mm. So, uh, Fraser Mine, good friend of ours. Hi. He says age is almost also irrelevant. Also, some of the cars. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, age is almost irrelevant, but only because there have been so few lately. Something that was groundbreaking or went on to be so, such as the Model T Ford, Volkswagen Beetle, original Mini Jaguar E-Type, Land Rover, uh, Fiat 500, Citroen, uh, Lancer, etc., etc. So he's saying he's saying basically that cars that have stood out in hist in automotive history are classic cars. Uh, da -da -da -da. Muhammad Azhar says a car that ages well, like an old wine. To simplify, a timeless piece of art for which the time stops. The first part, I agree with That's that. quite nice. <clears throat> I quite like that. Bob Collier says, panache and appeal to the owner. Classic is an individual taste. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, da -da -da. I'm, I'm, I'm skipping over the ones where people have got technical, because some people got really technical about what is a vintage car, how old is yeah. it. Yeah, we, can, we can go into that later. Nerds. Um, Nerds. Let's see, what else is a good one? Uh, Himasha says, uh, uh, he's, very, he's very specific. It has to be a Ferrari Daytona Spider in black, <laughs> wearing Garani wire wheels with a what's that? What's that? Cuyo, Cuyo interior. With a Cuyo interior. Cuyo, Cuyo interior. Tan interior. He's very, very specific oh, about I'm what he sure. thinks is a classic car. Uh, uh, <laughs> well, whatever you think is a classic is a classic it, yeah. to you. And remember, it's your money, so it might be any car you like. Then you, you got Mara uh, Sami. He says a car with a design that ages well, designed by legends, no nonsense equipment. The car which has only what it needed the most. 
Uh, John Silver uh, just posted up a, a picture of his, what is that, an Imperial? Yeah, American. That's a Black Beauty, that's a Black American Beauty. American and Bouncy. I know oh, that's a Lincoln Continental. Uh, oh, Lincoln Continental, and then uh, Anwar Ali Khan. He, he put which Mercedes? Six point three. Six point three. What year is that? Mercedes. It's a Mercedes. Oh, okay. People 70s. can't people can't see what you're showing. So I'll, yeah. put, I'll put I'll put I'll put pictures up. Mm. And um, so I, I, there's one here that I wanted to uh, that I found. I found a little objectionable myself. I have to say. Was there so a girl I'm going to read it? it out. I'm going to read it out. Uh, it's by it's by and I'm and I'm pretty sure this is not a real name. Because the name is Mike Crotch. <laughs> Mike Crotch. Yes. Uh, hello, my, hello, Mr. Roch. <laughs> How are you doing, Mr. Roch? So Mr. Roch says, translation of objects into useless nostalgia. Curb the classic car nostalgia BS. I think he means bullshit. Uh, and fund the progression of transportation. All this nostalgia just restricts progress. For example, if idiots would have understood that a manual transmission was created out of necessity and not the apparent joy, we would have had highways in the sky somewhere in the 80s. I'm not sure what he's going on about that. You know what? So I think, we'll actually, we'll wrap this up, and that's a good one to start with. What do you reckon to that? Because um, I, I, I think that's a little bit unfair. Okay, so you want to start with my comment on his comment? Yes. Go on. Okay, well, Go free. Well, yeah, I mean... Uh, <laughs> you can have a look at it if you like. Eh? Look, there's nothing wrong with nostalgia. That's why we rewatch classic movies. That's why um, so, so many religions are still popular. That's, well, yeah, look at that, exactly. Um, so no, I completely disagree. I mean, the man is still... Man, uh, yeah, mankind is still moving forward in terms of technology. I think he's taking... I think he's taking, I think he's taking a step forward technology because of F1, the hybrid technology, because of Formula E. But we, I think we're taking a step back in terms of the real human experience. In the same way that, that, that children, I don't think, have childhoods anymore. Um, not, not like not, really deep. Not really like, not, <laughs> you know, it, 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 wow. it, it, it's that... It's, 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 and, and the thing about classics is that, for me at least, they represent a different time. A time that we'll never get back. We're never going to get 1972 back again. Yeah, is it a true. real time or is it a time that we imagined? A bit of both, really. Yeah. Because even people, even some people, who may or may not be sitting here that were actually alive at the time, um, probably remember it's it different. <laughs> Like, I love the 80s, but there. I was nine years old when the 80s was, and I can't remember anything about the 80s. I do remember the 80s, and I still think the 80s was one of the best decades ever. I still, the 80s absolutely rocked. Are you but ranking I think, them? I think that, yeah, no, I actually, because you remember we did that thing with Chevrolet recently. Go check it out, the, the Camaro videos, you can find them, probably a link, hopefully. We'll put them I will put a link down somewhere, but we oh, did well, a we series of videos uh, on the five generations of Camaro, and they, these, gen these cars spanned five different decades, so mm. we were able to look at every single decade. And we found a historical up and down, you know, where there's, there's, there's global conflict, there's recession, there's problems. Cars and represent what's an, happening in the yeah, world. Yeah, yeah. And then there's an up and there's a down, you know what I mean? And we found that the 80s was probably the most positive and energetic and enthusiastic and flamboyant uh, of, of the decades. The 70s was also very flamboyant, but I think the 80s was, there's something about the 80s that was very, very special. I think it's because you had the flamboyancy of the 70s, but then you had technology of the 80s, computers coming in and everything, exactly, turbocharging yeah, actually working. Good, so. so the technology kind of brought a sort of But it was optimism. very primitive technology. Very I mean, primitive. if you can see the car behind us, uh, I don't know if you can make it out. Big but that to me, well, no, to me, that car is the 80s. I mean, right down to the shoulder pads it's wearing. You know, that is the 80s. That car represents the 80s. It's, it's brilliantly engineered. It's perfect, but it's also a bit of excess. It's a bit over the but top. You know, the you know? Testarossa is an interesting case because the Testarossa, up till say, can I be honest in saying 10 years ago, it wasn't very fancy. Testarossas were not that expensive. Values have been on the up recently. But why are they on the up, Asil? Well, because Nostalgia? because people uh, exactly. So I mean, you know, the Miami Vice. Some, mountains of cocaine. Some of the main reasons that, that the people buy cars are either because they had it on the bedroom wall, or because their dad owned one, or or they have memories in them. But their dad, not but, everybody's dad, owned a Testarossa. I know, but but many people had it on the bedroom wall. So you have people who had that on their bedroom wall, who had uh, some of whom are coming into money and who now are ready to buy this car, and then that slowly yeah. drives it up. I think this up. car really However, symbolizes the eighties. The, yeah. This yeah. completely, and I also, yeah. not only the eighties. I think it, it, it symbolizes beautifully. Um, the last, um, you know, the the last third of Ferrari's um, existence. Because when I think the Ferrari shape, yeah. well, when I used to think the Ferrari shape, I would think Testarossa. I mean, they made nine thousand yeah. of them, which is quite a lot for for those days. Because and interestingly, it's the only car that started within the Enzo era and ended deep into the Luca di Montezemolo era. Yeah. Well. So, how much are one of these going for? Because people are curious now. This is too many. Well, you can find um, you can find one that that has high miles, needs a bit of work for eighty thousand um, dollars. 
Um, eighty thousand dollars. For eighty thousand dollars, that's that's the cheap end. Um, but there's no such thing as a cheap Ferrari, is there? When it comes to maintenance, and you got to have no. history and records. Yeah, 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 exactly. You have but this one, for example, I mean, what's the price range? Well, this is a nine thousand kilometer North American specifications car. So a, it's low mileage, and b, it can go back to North America, which is there's a little premium on there. Um, so this car, we're asking uh, around one hundred seventy thousand dollars for it. And that's market rates, and you see the prices going up. Do you see a ceiling for it? Is there some point where people are like, okay, that's topped out. That's where the cars. For, for, for most for some cars. For have most out. cars, we they have plateaued. Yeah. For most most cars have plateaued. I think Tesla losses have actually dipped a little bit. Really. Yes, Tesla losses have dipped a little bit. Um, Why is that? That's there are. I think because I mean, there was a sort of a market correction that started in the I'd say mid to late 2015 that okay. started. Because um, classic cars were going nuts at one point. Because yeah. for a lot of people, well, let's be honest, it was a place to park your money as well. Well, this is it. I was going to say, I think after the last big recession. Oh, hold that. We'll come back in a second. We'll come back to that. We'll come back. Part two coming up. Completely disagree because I think uh, nostalgia is a big part of all of this for me. Yeah. I mean, with the Generelli, the fact that I was the first non Generelli person to drive the Generelli design one, for me, that's oh, great. One, you know, I'd start dreaming about how uh, it's going to be a huge company one day and I'm going to tell my, my grandkids, if anyone's dumb enough to marry me, that, <laughs> you know, I was the first non Generelli person to drive the Generelli. Apply, apply here. Apply here. And, and <laughs> Just leave it in the comments below. And, yeah. and when you. Uh, Dataasil.com. And, and by <laughs> the way, what is a Generelli? Look it up. We have a video on YouTube. Go and have a look. It's a car that's been designed, developed here Actually, in the is that UAE. It's the first car that was made in the UAE. No, there's a, there's a race going on for three of them. I guess I guess they're probably Production first out of the door. I guess they're, they're the probably door. first out of the door. And you're but the dealers. You know. to me we're, we're the official Although, dealers. again, again, it's technically not right because there are the cars that have been made here. But they, they're like military vehicles, they're commercial vehicles, they're stuff like that. Civilian car. Yeah, it doesn't have guns car. on it. Sports car. Yeah, we are the official well, distributors. Yeah, but, but what I was saying was, was the, the nostalgia element is the whole reason why the car market has done what it's done and there's nothing there's nothing wrong with nostalgia yes we oh, we, you know, we need to support support it's progression too much nostalgia a bad yeah. thing i mean people i, I think no. it is and it isn't no. but in a way, it's inevitable because new cars aren't as interesting, and old cars have so much more character. Just sitting there, the well, look of I think I think there's one thing is, is that sums it up, that especially in response to Mike Crotch, Mr. Crotch, and uh, which actually we've seen realized in the car industry and generally in the world as well, is that you have to look back to look forward. That's very clear. And the fact that um, you know, about five, ten years ago, you had all these cars come out, like the Mini, like the Mustang like the Fiat 500, there were all these sort of retro cars and then you saw, there you saw the industry going, you know what, we need new ideas, we need, to, we need new ideas but we need to go back to have a look at all. We need stuff. to go back, Marty. I think yeah. I think I think I think need, need, is, need is a strong word um, uh, because in all the in well, all actually, the if you look, we need if you to look know at, what we've done in the past. If you look at styling uh, of cars in the 80s and 90s, it did start <laughs> to get, particularly in the 80s, it started to get really quite bland. Um, even though we had a golden opportunity because we had better aerodynamics, so suddenly and better manufacturing well, what techniques. What are you talking about? Economy cars, hatchbacks, because supercars look cars, great in the cars, 80s. Everyday cars. So everyday cars. Uh, yeah, that's true. They all everyday look kind cars of bland. Were they look very boxy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The Volvo wagon was pretty much the template for most yeah. cars. Anything from Japan in the period. Yeah. And anything but from some America. Of those Japanese even, cars. All the 80s American cars, although they kind of look cool now, but at the time they were all the same shape. You know, that's so the thing we were talking about the other day. I mean, Japanese cars from the 80s are now starting to become pretty fancy. I don't know if they'll ever reach a million dollars. I mean, status. to be honest, like, you know, in the 80s, a Caprice Classic was everywhere, and you're like, oh, Caprice Classic. But now I'd love to have a Caprice Classic. I'd love to have a two door Caprice Classic. I mean, That'd I was, so I was, awesome, I was you know? born in England and I came to Abu Dhabi when I was 10 years old, and I saw a Chevrolet Caprice just like in the movies, yeah. the 80s one big yeah. boxy was it sideways with the, with the wheel trips going and I just thought this That's is the coolest thing it. in the world I just yeah. came back from Vauxhall Vetras and little Vauxhall yeah. and Polos and this is car game. I told my dad we have to buy one of these it's like yeah. 10,000 yeah. it's like they're, they're shitty cars yeah. and I said what? what's wrong you don't know anything yeah. now I completely appreciate that yes they are rubbish yeah. but they are still charming and bouncy no, and absolutely. Yeah, but they're so far on wheels exactly yeah. they've got the two spoke wheel they've got the ice cold AC which is the thing about every GM car in the 80s I want a black one two door Caprice classic you just think you're a gangster I want the SS you'll be rolling around and look at me I'm really the Can I have a cup of tea, yes. please? The Impala SS from the 90s, a black one. The soap, the soap bar. Yeah. I, <laughs> no, that I, was a genuinely gangster car. Oh, I love that. I love that. I Values for those are going up. I saw one that was the last one ever made at the GM Museum. And that had like delivery mileage. It'll never be driven. But it was the last Impala SS ever made. Buick GSX, mm -hmm. that V6 That's really black. Cool. You've got to have that GNX, in mind. Yeah, GNX, cool. sorry. Yeah. GSX is black, something right? else. It's an, it's an R1, R1 yeah. motorbike. Yeah. <clears throat> no, GNX, actually, the GNX is quite rare 
mm. because it was quite rare. But the Buick Grand National, which is almost the same car, is pretty plentiful. And the value those are going up. Those used to be like $20,000 cars. Now they're like thirty five, forty thousand 40000 going up. So again, they were quite fast because that engine, which was a turbo V6, mm. the 3.8 liter turbo V6, people now criticize me because I probably got that wrong. But they were, it was a small V6 turbocharged, Mitsubishi turbos became the cyclone in the 90s. Oh, and the, the, the pickup, the fastest right. accelerator. It was the same drive car. It was a four-speed automatic. And you know something why it was special? Because it wasn't retro, it was genuinely freaking fast. It would deserve 100 in about five seconds, which would burn, mm. burn Ferrari 348s. Oh yeah, yeah Ferrari sitting over there. Th- Sorry. There's no Ferrari that could keep up with this humble Buick. You just Buick. apologize to a car. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, and then my family, I mean, it's... Uh, no, no, but this is, this is actually going back to our original question of what defines a classic car. I think that... You have an answer, yeah. Well, we, 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 I think we kind of have in a roundabout yeah. way. Um, but I think that, you know, again, going back to the whole nostalgia thing, I think that's very important because it is, it does define, uh, for every brand, it kind of defines where they are, what they are, and where they should be going. We've just had, the, we just, I just reposted a story today. Uh, I think it's from Truth About Cars, wasn't it? Yeah. Where they've just talked about Honda sort of finding its mojo again. And the people at the top of oh Honda Oh boy, now, has Honda lost their mojo. Yeah, but, but people at the top of Honda are saying that. They're saying that. They say there's a realization there. Do you know how many you conversations know? we've had with people saying Honda have lost their mojo and they worked at Honda? And half of them agree, but they just don't. Nobody wants to say anything. Nobody wants to lose their jobs. Nobody wants to upset the Apple car. But as the article pointed out, Honda became like Toyota. I love the S2000. But this, but this is the thing. But now with these guys... But that's old Honda. But what they're doing now is they're looking back at before that period. What made Honda special? You know? and this Actually, is, this we is were a part of do. that. We because were. I mean, I've no, owned tons of Honda. No, but we literally were a part of that. Remember the Civic story that I broke? My yeah. first day on the job. I'm quite yeah. happy to bring that up. But a car magazine. Yeah, a car, car Middle East magazine. Rest in peace. Yeah. Greatest magazine in the Middle East. Sorry, no discussion. No discussion. But on my first day in the job, we spotted the ninth generation Civic and it was doing a test around mm. town. And it was on a classic car rally. And the guy drivers drove up and parked next to us. And I just started snapping pictures with your camera. I grabbed out of your bag and just started taking pictures. And the drivers, who were to be fair, not their fault, just nice guys who didn't really, really know that they shouldn't take a camouflage car a year from being unveiled and just stop and look at. They should have just kept driving. But there were so many cool cars there. There was that uh, hot rod. have a look. They stopped to have a look. <laughs> and then we used to start taking pictures. And the moment I saw it, I knew it was a 9th Gen Civic. And the moment I saw it, I knew something was wrong. I knew that this car had cheaped out in every way. The plastics looked, even for a test car. So, sorry, which year was the 9th Generation Civic? It would be like a 2010. It was 2010. 2010, yeah. We broke the story oh, the next right, day. Yeah. It went incredibly viral. The poor drivers actually waved to us in the video. You can probably still <laughs> find the video. I don't know if they lost their jobs or whatever. They were really nice guys. I mean, peep, they were so, Honda was so angry. They called wow. you up, right? Yeah, they did. They called you up and they said, take the story down. And, and we were like, no, no way. <laughs> and it was too late by then. It had gone everywhere. Everybody picked People it up. People so. yelled at us and said, Honda. Forgiven us, please. <laughs> no, no, they were much less happy than that. <laughs> but the thing was, People didn't know if it was the beginning of fake news. People thought that oh, we'd made it up or we got the car wrong, but we knew. Mm. And Honda launched the car a year later, and it was the car. Obviously, it was the Civic, but the damage had been done. Mm. People knew that this wasn't as good as the eighth gen Civic, which was a great car, really good car, sold in massive numbers. The, the triangular one. Uh, that was a kind of gloopy one, but it was nice. It drove really well. One point eight. The, the, the John the, Steen's this car. If you ever seen it. No. Okay, never mind. Anyway, Google eighth gen Civic. But they rushed a midlife facelift because they knew that they'd got it wrong. Mm. It was too late. The just, car never sold. A year and a half later, I think. How come the there. UAE never received, or the Gulf never received the, the, the triangular looking one where, you know, where James May said that the hazard light looks like a boiled no, sweet? Very, they did. Very oh, the very, very, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We got the Type R and we had the 5 door. Really? Yeah. I've but seen a couple, but I thought they were imports. silly expensive. No. It was like 90,000 there. The trouble is that they were bringing them in from the UK because that's where they were built. They were built in Swindon. They were expensive. They were expensive for this market. And they were launched in the middle of a recession. And that but, and kiss also, of death. And also, to be honest, they were brought in towards the end of that model year's life cycle. Mm. So they were like, okay, well, this is a run out model anyway. Why are you bringing it now? And you know, we like new stuff here in Dubai. Mm. We don't like stuff that's been around for a and while. And that Type R so, didn't sell very well to the point where it had a bad rep for whatever reason. People didn't like it. I loved it. But people didn't like it. Never but tried I loved it. it. <laughs> I, I drove it. I liked it. But 
it's never a great tried car. It. Mm. Yeah. No. So but fantastic. it just didn't work. It just didn't work. It's a future will classic. That, will that be a future classic? It will be a future classic. So what are we segueing into? Modern classics? Well, well, I, th I think well, I think I think you're finishing you're, that definition of what I think your tuner people, um, you know, the PlayStation generation, the Fast and the Furious generation. I think they get they already have had an effect on values. Uh, R34 Skylines have already gone a bit stupid. Classic. It's it's a very umbrella term like hipster. You can't define a hipster. There are hipster elements in people. I no, I don't know. The length of his beard. But uh, but uh, but I think a classic should how be high his a classic like should have something interesting, which can also be the aesthetics. Yeah. Interesting um, providence. I interesting story. no, not necessarily, not necessarily. I don't think so. No, but I here's a look, look. Listen, right. Here's the thing. Again, going back to the Goodwood revival, we're watching these races, and we're watching these little uh, Austin A40s running around. I would never have thought of that car as a classic. That is not a cool car to me. You know what I mean? Austin I would A40 not. Is not but a all cool of a sudden, car. it's in a classic car race, and I'm watching it, and I'm going, that's the coolest thing ever. Because <laughs> it looked like a goddamn rocket. So I, th I think that there is such a loose definition of classic that literally anything He's Googling can be. It. Yeah, the classic know, car man does not know what an Austin A40 is. Oh, good lord. That looks yeah, like that one, a dinky exactly. car. You know? Can you show it to the camera? Classic, yes. I show this to the camera. Before. Classic, yes, but collectible no. So that's what I was going to say, was that. Closer, closer, closer. Was that there? we go. That's right, perfect. That's done. You know, we because just because you have a difference between an old car, like a 2003 or 1980s Nissan Sunny. That's just an old car. Yeah, but, you say, but again, you say that. Some people but might. Again, if someone that, owns it, like, they'll say it's a classic. So, for example, but. right now, I mean, <coughs> trying to find original, say, Mark One Honda Civics or Mark One Honda Accords, you can't find them. So, if you find a really good one, if you find a really good What's clean original worth? one, What's isn't that worth? classic? Again, umbrella term, and it depends on the individual who's looking at the car. So yeah. what I was going to say was someone who's, who has an 80s Nissan Sunny, to them, if they adore it, if it has a story, if they were born in it on the way to hospital or whatever, then it has, it has a story. Too. So for them, it's a classic, but in, if to the general world, no, it's not. Chevrolet Bel Air or, or whatever, they, made, they built them thousands and thousands and thousands of them, but it's still considered a classic. Is it collectible? No, so why because is they it, so why is a Beetle classic? It's the most ubiquitous car in the world. A, 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 a Beetle is a classic. Oh, yeah, ab absolutely. Um, it's got a cult following. It's got a fan following. Um, I'm going to say films, books, movies, TV. The I, Beetle is well represented in the pop culture world. I'm going to go further. I'm going to go further. I'm going to say both of you. I'm going to say, no, I'm going to say it is, it's anything can be. We've got to Nazis by Literally three. anything can be a classic. You know, if there if there is a desire to Even have people. that car still around. Oh, yeah, well, I'm a classic, of course. Yeah. But Look, if you're talking from an individual perspective, yeah. then, then, then yes, again, the sunny example or, or, or yeah. whatever. But if you're talking in a general uh, general uh, sense, no, I don't well, think anything Well, if you, take, if you take a car that's going up in value, mm. so if you take so a Nissan Sunny, then all of us, if it's going up in, in value, then is that not a classic then? Well, Isn't that part of the wait, definition this, this, of a depend, classic? Depends on where you draw the line. How much is it going? Is it going up in value significantly or is it... Um, oh, oh, I can't well, if you, take, if you take any old Japanese car from like the seven, eight, 70s or early 80s, I mean, that should not go up in value. That should not even... Plateau. That should just keep going down so, until it's worth so, nothing, so right? So shit cars. Yeah. If if they if if they are going up he in value, it, I didn't. they go. They do. They would become. They, they become classics. They become collect. They become yeah. collectibles. But yeah. that hasn't happened for 1980s yeah. and Sunnies yet. No. But, but um, if you take stuff like uh, AMC Pacer. Mm, mm. For example, I consider shit that car. Well, well, shit car. One second, the Pacer was the one with one door longer than the other hatchback. Yes. Yeah? yeah. 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 I consider that a classic. I consider it stupid. The Wayne's World car. Yeah, but it, it's 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 still it has its charm. It's different. It's stupid. Uh, you see, you see, uh, you see. You at know. the time, it didn't. At the I consider time, it. it was a, just a big, I don't big, consider it a collectible, it a, it but I consider it a classic. It was a little big stupid car. That's what it was. You so, know? so all right, look at a Ferrari 512 BB. That's a classic, it, but it's it, also a collectible. The AMC Pacer think, you know, is think, a classic, but I don't think it's a collectible. I think, I think these cars, these <coughs> cars are in a different stratosphere altogether. I think there's, there's classic, and then there's these, these cars. I mean, these cars. Are, you know, Ferrari rolls out of the factory. It's instantly a classic. Although the, the latest lately, Ferrari, maybe you can argue either way. Lately, there's way too many bloody Ferraris. But I think that with some other cars, I think that if a car is looked after and well kept and there's there's an affection, there's, a, there's an okay, there's I can an emotion attached to that car, I think that it can be a classic car. I think that anything can be a classic That's car. That's an like old car with a story. Yeah, an AMC It's not a classic, an AM, it's an, an old AMC, car with a story. An AMC Pacer should not be a classic car. It's charming and it has an... It, no, it, it was not charming at it, the time. It, yeah, at the time it wasn't, it was but at the same time... At the, at can the we wrap this up please and move on? No, We're just not going to get anywhere. We're just talking at cross purpose. This is all conversation on the internet. Hitler will turn up in a minute <laughs> because well, everything ends up with think about the, the, the Ferrari um, a Ferrari 212 Intercoupe alright Ferrari was what? not a known brand it was you have to help out the readers it, what the hell is a 212 Intercoupe it, it's, it's a very early early 50s uh, Ferrari um, one of the older ones um, 
but um, it's not four five eight. No, sorry, one of the older ones. No shit, it's one of the older ones. But when that came, most out, the audience <laughs> is like, "What the hell?" When, is that, a when that came out, no one heard of that either, and no one really appreciated it. Um, same thing happened with the pacer. But look at look at where we are now. So uh, the the pacer was different and weird. And so I think it earns the right to be called a classic, not so a, is not it, a collector. So is, a, is, is a Renault Aventine a classic? I adore the Renault Aventine. The guys <laughs> who sold me my Lancia. Agree with him. I adore the Aventine. It's one of the coolest cars in the world. It is bizarre. It is it's fantastic. Like I, was, I, I rented the Fiat Bath 500 to yeah. do a little Euro trip, and I overtook a Renault Aventine. Yeah. And there was uh, there was a family in there. I had to I had to sound the yeah. horn and go, guys, oh, brilliant, brilliant. It's just it's a, such no, a cool I've, car. I've given one. It is the How most is it? bizarre experience. Yeah. You're in a combination of a bus, an MPV, and a sports coupe, all in one. It's just the most bizarre thing ever. It doesn't make any sense on any level whatsoever mm. and it didn't do well but like you say you look at but it now and you just go, if you Patrick find somebody with a really good one yeah. then you'll be like you know what that's worth holding on to I would genuinely I, mean, I would say right now I would say right now any good 80s car that you can find any unmolested, unmolested. original unmodified 80s car that you can find clean Keep buy them, keep them. Put them in the warehouse and keep them. Because Choose, I no, no, a lot no, 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 no. There needs, to, there needs to be some wisdom behind the purchases. I don't think you can just find a good condition car from the 80s. I mean, you might not lose your money if you don't drive through your maintainer, but I think there should be some thought put behind I it. Think, I think that what happens is that <clears> as, uh, as, as we have less and less of these cars, and we are having less and less of these cars, because, you know, just at the moment, I was just reading, at least three companies in the UK recently have announced another clash for clunkers scheme. You know? Basically, you take in your old car. Uh, okay. They give you a subsidized discount on, on the new one. So basically, even if you've got a nice old car, but it's not worth anything at the moment, you take it in and they buy it, and then they, usually they'll scrap it. Which for the, a lot of great old cars in the UK have been killed because of this, mm-hmm. you know, which didn't necessarily deserve it to be killed. Started in what two thousand nine ish? Recession, yeah, recession, yeah. recession. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, so which bad. didn't deserve to be killed, but because the owners didn't know what to do with them, didn't know the real value, I need more money. Restore them and needed the money and needed a new car. They thought, okay, let's just get rid of it. Um, so we're finding less and less of these cars around. I mean, I, when, when I was in the UK, I used to buy a lot of cars off eBay because you get great cars for three or four hundred pounds. Now you can't. Mm. Now you can't because they've all been scrapped. Remember when a Vanquish S in the UK in the recession was something like thirty-five thousand pounds or something <laughs> no ridiculous? Way. They really sank. It was terrible. Now if you find one for less than one hundred forty thousand pounds, and but there's another thing you see in the UK. You get big expensive cars tend to plummet quite rapidly, mm. especially when from new. They rapid, uh, especially big luxury. Unless it's a like limited that. Ferrari, then yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a different mm. uh, different stratosphere, like I said. But mm. if it's like a big SUV, like a Range Rover or something, straight or an down. S five hundred. Yeah, yeah uh, straight down. But after a while, they start. They, they plateau, all Ferraris. They start to pick up again. I'm going to put this theory that all Ferraris eventually become collectible. It just the yes. time is very long. They need time to age. Like even the four five eight, God help us, one day will be collectible because there won't be that many of them left. Yeah. But it's going to be a long way. Well, they made know, they made eighteen thousand of them cars as well. now than they've ever made. Before. Actually, three hundred eight is really collectible and it's one of the most best selling Ferraris of all time. It was the three hundred eight sold in tons of them. For, for its time, yeah. For then, its well, time. then when Luca took over again, it just um, he, he 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 took the company to another. In terms of sales, he took the company and to a whole other level. And quality, mm, yeah, yeah. yeah, and yeah. build quality, durability. I think durability and reliability. Although he is the one who introduced those the the pla- well, not him personally, but it was in his era where the terrible plastics uh, came into. Have you ever seen <laughs> Ferrari sticky sticky buttons before? What's the Ferrari sticky buttons? Ferrari thing? sticky buttons is well, they just it's, many of Ferrari's plastics are quite rubbish uh, and they just don't age well. So we once had a five twelve M where literally you touch any black plastic surface pull your finger away about a centimeter of, of grime like a cheesy pizza almost with, with, is that with because of heat things. what's the story it's just because of cracked plastic that's just aged it's as simple yeah. as that I'll show you uh, we may have a couple of buttons in here so how do you fix it um, change the whole you have, you have one of three choices one of four choices either you take it to the dealership here who will then end up using choice number two which is what we use which is the guys um, the, the, the dealership hires some guys over here to do this for them we just go straight to those guys they just simply um, remove the stick Repaint and then it never happens again. So, sand, so those are sand, two. Sand it down and repaint. It. No, just w- wipe the hell out of it. They don't oh, sand really? it. Yeah, okay. and they do a bit of uh, so like painting. A, wow. And then or you can rem- or you can replace them if you're mad because um, <laughs> that will cost thousands. Or you can send them to the states to a company called Sticky No More and they do this all the time. Sticky No More. Sticky No More. That and they're, they're quite well, they're well known to Ferrari owners. That's as well. what it says on the tin. Uh, <laughs> so I mean, our 360 channel Stradali, the previous owner, he had sticky buttons galore, and so he was an sticky old sticky buttons galore. <laughs> the least favorite Bond girl. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> and so what, what he I did was he, he replaced all the buttons, which is a colossal. Uh, the, you know, what a fool! Not, How much did that cost him? 
Oh, I'd probably say about twelve thousand dirhams. I wouldn't be surprised. But then when uh, we got when we but then he, again, that's nice much he on kept, shocks. He kept the sticky buttons on the side. Mm. So when we got the car, we just simply refurbished the them. And now the, now the car comes with um, a selection of spare with buttons. buttons. <laughs> with the original button selection. Uh, but I mean, yeah, that, that's not the main selling point. It's Classic certified and has six hundred eighty kilometers. What's Classiche? So you've you talked about Classiche. Classiche. If you tell Italians Classiche, they they they, they start hitting. I don't you. care. Um, Classiche. So okay, it's Classiche. What is what is the deal? A classic certification. certification. So every year in January, Ferrari they release a list of every car. They update the prices depending on the market. I'm stopping the accent. They're updating the price uh, every, every every January, right? They get a whole list oh of classic Ferraris. Oh my Ferraris. God! Seriously, we're um, we're and um, all over and the so place. essentially, it's just a process where Ferrari comes. In, they inspect your car. These they take photographs. They send it. They send it to. So yeah, the, they send it. To, they send it back to the factory in Italy. The factory come back the Classic A department and say yes, it's original. No, it's not. That that that's not original. That needs replacing. And the cost of this certification can be anywhere from two thousand dollars, or the you know for something like a, a Mondial, um, or it can cost about twelve thousand for a two hundred and fifty GTO. It depends on the market value of the car. Ferrari do that every year in January. So you have they, to send the car back to Maranello. No, 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 no. You can have someone to send photographs. Uh, oh. And that someone would be Altair Motors. Uh, so the official, so the official dealer, official dealer. Um, and so it's. Uh, so how much does that add to the value? Just to finish this up, because we've got about a minute left. Uh, if you want to, if you want to be generalistic, um, I'd say it would add up to ten percent to the value. Wow. But here's, 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 here's the problem, though, because the market is, is 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 can be very clever and can be very stupid at the same time. Thing is, you can get Classic A certification, but then you know you can after you get the red book, which is a beautiful red book, by the way. I should have got one. It's soft. One of those materials. It's, it's lovely. You, could, you could go and change the and bits And so, of the car. W- and what's lovely about um, what's lovely about no, what was I going to say? Shall no, well, once you've got the once you've got this, you could then you could then go and change the car. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. You know, exactly. You, and you exactly. can, it's still there. Exactly. You've still got it. So it's like what's So uh, so it's it's, a it's, bit, it's basically saying once upon a time this car was original. We don't know about today. Because this is the book dated. Yes. Okay, so once upon a time, and the owner said, "Yeah, I never did anything to the car. I just drove it to Spinney's and then I parked it, and then I want 10% more." Got the sticky buttons in the bag in the boot. And the thing is, with classic certification, the car <laughs> has to be either older than 25 years or it has to be a limited car. So our uh, 575 Super. Four, no 458. No 458 Speciale, yes. 458 Speciale Aperta, yes. But the Aperta probably came with uh, Classic A, um, uh, you know, th- but it's a yellow file instead. Um, All right, we shall come back to this in a second. Part three in a minute, everyone. We're going live. So I'm bleeding. bleeding. Yeah. That's for my stuff. I smacked my head on a window on in Marseille. That's you, a thing. There's that shaving cut on the top of your head. No, I smacked a window in Marseille. I was in a hotel and I, I they said... How this, long ago was that? Uh, a couple of weeks. And it's still bleeding It's now. a non-smoking room, uh, dear, which I ignore dear. in Europe. Do you not because clot? Do you not clot? You know, is, is, your blood, is there some problem with your blood that it doesn't just... What are you bleeding? implying? He's perfectly legal. <laughs> <laughs> Not this smart, pretend you got it. <laughs> Fuck you, what are you like? So, uh, <coughs> whilst we were having a break, you were regaling us with your impressions of Nusrat Fateh Ali Khan. Yeah, Can, you do, can you do impression of Nusrat Fateh Ali Khan? Puche dek dek suna, puche dek kar hajegena, mere es nekani. Yeah, that's enough. Jiya dharra ka dharra ka jahe. Oh, that's the rest of the show, folks. That's it. That's it. That's a wrap. I'm here till Wednesday. <laughs> so come down here. You not only get to see classic cars, but you just tell him which Nissan Fortuner you want. I will serenade you, and he, and he will do that one. How many of them? How many songs do you know? Only, only that one. Only that one. But I know it completely. That's the thing. All out. Okay. And so one day, you have a theater as well. I think. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, think we should have. Once a year, at least. Yeah. I think we should have a Fortuner Ali tribute session right here. In I Camino. don't. <laughs> Because I don't know one song and I don't really care. I mean, sorry, I'm sure he's a great icon. And everything. He's massive. Like, literally, he was. He was oh, right, really? Yeah, he was. He massive. was a big fan. His son <laughs> still sings, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's now taking Is he over. also massive? He's, he's biggish. He's he, biggish. he performed in Dubai a couple of years yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah. Biggish is very, the technical, very, biological yeah, term. Yeah, it's, 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 it's very similar. <laughs> Mr. Rogers, Mr. you are biggish. Biggish. Um, <laughs> so politically correct. <laughs> well, I'm tallish. No, I'm just tall. Um, I'm baldish. But British the thing is, uh, he, it's very good because he does he does a lot of his father's stuff as well. Mm. Um, see, the thing that, that made Nusrat Fateh Ali Khan famous was that he took traditional Qawwali, and Qawwali's got an incredible well, Qawwali. history. Qawwali is a Sufi uh, form it's of song. songs. <laughs> it's 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 like jazz at soul because it, it feeds off. And it's we were earlier we were talking about concerts, and we were talking about when we attended a concert by him, and I attended a concert by him, <coughs> um, and in an intimate environment. 
the wonderful thing about Kowali, because Kowali isn't isn't fixed. The, the, the performer can take it in any direction, depending on the, the feedback that wow. he's getting on, he's, he's getting from the audience. So it, you know, it's quite you know liquid in that sense, you know, and it can it can get really exciting or it can just fizzle out. That's know? the thing about theatre as well. I mean, you know, one day you'll have a great interactive audience yeah. who gets all the jokes, the next day you won't, and then the problem is with theatre is is the first bad reaction from the audience makes all the actors and all the performers exactly. like, oh, oh, and then the and then it just completely it'll deflate it. It'll deflate it. But Kowali, uh, but the thing what Fata, Fata Ali Khan did with Kowali was that he fused it with modern stuff. So a lot of the stuff that I was listening to at the time, you know, on cassettes. Cassettes, remember cassettes? Mm, back in the day. <laughs> a lot of cassette players. A lot of yeah. cassette players yeah, here, yeah, actually. Yeah. Uh, we, sorry, sorry to interrupt. We have an eight-track um, player awesome. and 24, 24 eight-tracks in our 308 fiberglass. If we can film... Yeah. I don't know, just, I'm not the director. Yeah. But we'll come back in a bit. We, we have a box just full of 24 and just good stuff. Little Excellent. Richard, Elton John. Well, so did they oh. all work? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I listened to Hey Maggie May uh, while driving. Hey there, Maggie, I think I got <laughs> something to say to you. Good stuff. <laughs> Security guards are thinking, what the hell is going on over there? They said they were going to talk <laughs> about classic cards. I don't think this is about classic cards. <laughs> this overtime thing, you know. A lot of this stinging is just terrible, no? <laughs> Well, yeah. they're not from what Delhi. They're from, they're, from they're, they're from Nepal. They're, they're, they're from Nepal, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Daniabad. <laughs> thank you in Nepal. <laughs> so we've defined that the people who like classic cars are a bit odd. A bit mental, really. Oh, dare you. A bit yeah. mental. A little bit mental. But you have to be. But I think you have, have to, to be, be interesting. Can you be a boring person if you have a classic car? I don't know. You tell me you have one. <laughs> and then I just walk. like why are you why are you high-fiving me? you're all right in my book I like the cut of your jib Shazad thank you I'm just oh, depressed now I need counsel <laughs> look at your jib so beautifully cut that jib I swear have you ever seen a better jib than awesome. his I'll, I'll cut his jib off I will <laughs> Leave the giblets out. That's all right. I'm not talking. I'm not getting into giblets tonight. What's my crotch that thing? Yeah, that's we're back to my crotch, really. My crotch rocks. <laughs> my crotch is everywhere. Um, oh, he will be after this. I tell you that much. Uh, my crotch got deported, but uh, oh, I stayed boy. behind. So we asked, we asked one final we asked question. question. Well, we you asked didn't answer that question. Which one? Can you be boring if you have a classic car? Uh, and you have one, so you answer it. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, the no, jury's no. out. Uh, you definitely can be. There's so, there's so many classic car bores out there. Who, who, Is uh, it people who know way too much about the cars? Precisely. Well? When it's someone who knows everything about one brand or everything about one model and just goes on and on and on and on and on. And then you wish you were dead. Yeah. Some, some, some people, I mean, look, I, 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 I'm passionate about cars, so I can learn about them. But then it reaches a point where someone's talking to you where you can't just tell them, pause, I'll get back to that in 45 minutes. But you can when you're reading Actually, or you won't. Show. You'll just quietly drift away <laughs> and you'll come back to that conversation. Um, and, no, and but that's but it is a very good point. I mean, you know, for example, Stop I'm, I'm, him up. I'm a, no, no, I, I'm a terrible one for my memory's terrible, so I don't remember facts and figures. Even in car, car just, people come up to me and say, How much is this car? What is the zero to hundred? Where's the engine? Where's the trim? I'm like, I don't bloody know. Look it up, let's Google it. It's all on the internet. What's that for? But if it was but, a bit of fiber last trimmer, a Lotus Esprit, no, 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 but that's what I was going to get to that. I was going to get to that because I love the Lotus Esprit, but even now, if you ask me what are the specific Episode differences, three. you know, because there are Lotus fans, there's Esprit fans out there that will look at Lotus and say, Oh, I, I will, I'll look at it. I'll go, oh, it's beautiful. And then we go, oh, it's got the wrong spoiler on it. It's mm. got the wrong bumper on it. It's got the, the wrong taillight. I'm like, I don't care. I don't give a shit. It looks like it's free to me. It looks great. But there are people that we're very particular about that. Yeah, I mean, and anytime I look at an E-Type over here, I, I can't help but yeah. notice these things. Yeah, yeah. Does it I matter? I think you pointed no. out something, didn't you, on the... Was it you that pointed out on the on the one they've just done the electric one? Yeah, yeah. They said it's a series that one and you, a half. It? It's not a series one and a half. It's a series one, or they played with it. They said it's completely series one, except for the. Who oh, gives man. a shit? But, 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 it's no. got a freaking electric, electric motor in it I, now. I, I got a real problem with that. I got a real problem. Me too. With that. Me too. I mean, me too. the whole point of a classic car is that you it's have an engine. It's faster. It's two seconds faster. Give it gives a, a flying <laughs> I don't give fish, a damn. Honestly, I just want to hear a straight six. Yeah. I want to drive an E-Type sun in uh, sun wind through what my hair. Look, if you want to show off with the looks of the car and. Uh, and, buy you, a painting. And, you, and you don't care buy about a action. painting. Exactly. Buy I mean, a model. The thing, honestly, the British Straight Six is my favorite engine of the 20th century uh, that I've experienced. You know, I haven't done pre-war yet, so I don't so know. So tell me this. Tell me this. Tell me this. Is it, is it sacrilege to take one of those cars, or to take any car, and you know, if you want to drive it around, you, you okay, forget the electric motor, but you swap another engine into it. Is that sacrilege? Um, no. Which is a short answer because because you're using the car. This chassis and this this car, the way it looks, is being seen by people. You're showing it with people, so that's good. Um, 
However, people there, are, there is someone in engines or there is, engines? Well, there's someone in the US who has a Ferrari 250 GT Coupe and he's hot rodded it and put a V8. That I think is sacrilegious because the car is so rare that it should be preserved. Yeah. You know, um, E types they made 9,000, so I'm not as annoyed as if they yeah. did that with a with a with a, a Daytona, for example. Yeah. You know, 9,000 cars over the course of. of Which is the months. answer to that question? Because everybody says you should LS all the things and put LS. I don't I think you should. Not. If you had a Tucker no, no, 48, no, you you'd leave it alone. I, I, I I'd kill the person with LS Tucker. I would love to find yeah. an old uh, two door uh, XJ mm. coupe, two mm. door. Mm. Mm. They're beautiful. beautiful car. I know where he's going with but this. But it won't go anywhere because it's freaking unreliable. I'd love to LS one of those. I'd rather put That's an E type. Yeah. I'd, put, I'd rather put an E type straight six. The thing is. Keep it in the family. Is that, that, more, the is that, is that more reliable? I, I prefer is that more reliable? No, absolutely not. <laughs> But it's, it's That's my point. I want to use oh, so the car. It's more reliable potentially than whatever that was. What was it was using? That was using. That was, that, that was using a straight six. It was carburetor. using a straight six. Yes, there were two versions. There was XA12 and would, there was uh, the regular one, the sixth one. But the the XA12. So if, if you remember the new Avengers on TV and Steed, and Steed had that um, XJ12. It was based on the Tom Walkinshaw race car. Okay. Yeah. 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 So the there was the only BBS that's it. Back, so the yeah. only one road-going version that was specifically made for the TV program. It sounds that is mm. awesome. You know. Although I hear that the actual car they used on the show, it was supposed to be an XJ12, but they swapped it out with a six because, like you said, I think they put the six in it. Things the the LS7 putting it in some cars is 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 just stupid because uh, you know the. The charm of a classic carbureted engine that's low end torque, a British straight six, Look, for example. I think if the yeah. car is something that's going to be scrapped or written off, like, what's the save guy? it. Yeah, yeah, what's the guy that I visited in the US? Jonathan Ward, Icon Autos, right? Yeah. Icon Four, but he yeah. had a role, which he just finished two years later, took a while. Um, half a million dollar, uh, hot rodding job. He took a Rolls Royce Silver Shadow, you know, the, the, the John Lennon one, and dropped a 7 liter LS7 into it. And then he did a Hellcat version as well. And no, but it's like it's a, if it's reversible, if it's re I prefer it to be reversible. No, no, no. But but it's like I you don't say, think the it's car not about reversible because yes, a lot of these things are. But it's like you say, what, where did the car start? If the car started as a relatively good or even a concourse car, then it's yeah, a crime. Then you don't want to mess with it. Yeah. Then you don't want to mess with it. But if the car was found in a shed and it was literally on its last legs, and you say, you know what, I'll take, I'll take the shell, I'll take, take everything out, but I'll bring it back to life by putting something. Else. As, I think that's fine. As someone who 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 has to look at originality all the time. Yeah. I prefer things to be reversible yeah. um, because, the, you know, 100 years from now, 200 years from now, when the car is obsolete mm. and they're in museums, you want, and them, we're flying you, you, you want them to be as accurate as possible because mm. they're pieces of history. Um, when you're looking at pottery from 4,000 years ago, you want it to be as, as realistic as possible. When you're looking at a cathedral, you want it to be as accurate I don't know, as I don't possible. Like, I don't like pottery. So, so and if it's reversible, I'm happy. Uh, you know, I think that's fine, but I think reversibility is massively important. All right, we've got 10 minutes left. Let's run through our well, last let's run through. Okay, so we asked on our Facebook page... Uh, Most we depressing asked set of answers I've ever Would you buy a classic car? Yes. So I'm going to run through these really quickly. I'll skip over some of them because some of them will say the same thing. Uh, Mohammed L. Hey, Mohammed, how are you doing? He said, sure, but uh, not sure locally. I would probably buy it with a low budget to swap in a modern engine, which is what we've just been talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. I always dream my favorite, but it's, but it's expensive. It's hard to own here due to unavailable parts. Salman Hussain said, it's too much work here, especially with spares, and there's just not enough appreciation. Uh, Cam McDonald says, is a 68 mm. Charger considered a classic yet? Well, yeah. Yes, yeah. it is, Cam. Uh, Tom, Don't worry about that, mate. Your yeah. 68 Charger is welcome here any day. Tom Tucker said, it would, be, it would be tough to watch the sun do its evil deeds to a classic car. He's got a fair point. He's got a fair bit of experience with Hensky, that as well. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, you need to keep it shaded uh, and preferably air conditioned as well to the ridiculous which, which is what you do here. Rubbers. Yeah. Yeah. Fritz, uh, Fritz Rago says, is an E30 M3 considered a classic? Yes. Yep. Yes, I right think now so, yeah. it is. I mean, that has yeah. been steadily going up. Maybe plateauing though. I feel like it's plateauing. E30 no, was, was think, the first uh, one yeah, that has a, a wide, widish uh, fenders. Yeah, yeah. 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 He's making hips, mate. Uh, hip uh, Osama Real Khan, living Black in handles. Saudi, yeah. never. The car scene is dull, and as an expat, you never, uh, you never know when you're asked to pack up and leave. Fair, fair point. But you know, there are a lot of actually cool classics in Saudi. You saw a bunch of them. Well, in Saudi, but the they're hidden away were in collections there, and there. palaces. They were just sold there, and then either they were dumped or they were just left around the back of the museum. We had a contest that was delivered new there. Yeah. Uh, I drove the Countach in Saudi. It's the first time I ever. You have a Saudi Countach. You had a Saudi Countach. Uh, no, actually, it was Armani. Sorry, now that I remember, it was it was delivered to Armani in dark blue, yeah. and then the Armanis said, you know, no, actually, they want it. Send it back to Italy, and then the Italians made it red, and then it lived there. It was actually a US spec car because the Golf received US specification. Countach is getting kilo in kilometers an hour, yeah. So it had the US front bumper and a US rear bumper, which on an LP uh, on a five thousand QV. Is that the terrible. Cannonball Run mm. car? Bumpers um, with the overriders. Where at the back, it's 
I don't yeah, think the, I don't think the I ones there are override. I can show you. A I think it just had the extended bumpers on. But it. when it was sent back to, I like Dick's Cannonball look bumpers. They were mm. okay, but I think this 20th yeah, anniversary the car. car. The only problem with the Cannonball cars are that front spoiler as well, which is really weird. I like the front. Is spoiler. it with it's the so double uh, warthog teeth? Yeah, it's got the, yeah, yeah, it's got the, the front spoiler. The rear spoiler I don't mind because the Contest to me kind of like you know had to have it because that was a poster car. I'm just while you're doing that, I'm going to run through the rest of these. Uh, Mohammed Zeshan says definitely he wants a Mercedes 300 SEL. You found it. Mm. These, this is this is yeah. This yeah. was the rear That's of the, the car. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. This was the front of it. Um, and the front of it was replaced when it went back to Italy. It was made uh, made European and proper. 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 Pucker. Pucker. So that was a, that, that any Countach is cool. So uh, any Blacko says this type yes, and he's included a picture of his Integra Type R. Uh, it's a Type R, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, well, well, well rep replica. Then. Let's move uh, on. Matteo, Tio, I don't know. Matteo. How, Matteo Mat Mat how do you pronounce that? I'm uh, Matthew. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, have, do, and would. So yep, he's, he's like he's in there. That's a, a nice way to put it. Uh, yeah. Abe, Abe says he's a proud owner. Yes, he has. In fact, we've featured his car. 68 it's, or uh, 70, 72 charger? 70, 71 or 72 charger. It's on the website. Wow, it's on the YouTube. It? Green. Green. Uh, Joel Johnson, yes, Ferrari F40. Yes. Oh, ultimate Ferrari. Mm. Nazman says Datsun. Laurie Bridges says absolutely. Farouk Amos said have owned many over the years and restored most myself, but it seems they're not practical in the UAE. Uh, James Gayan says absolutely own a few. Uh, I've said it. I don't know if I was allowed to say yeah. it, but I've said it anyway. It's said it. Uh, Omar, Omar Osama Helmi says absolutely. Hemel Dave. Hemel Dave says yes, undoubtedly. And Accessorize, I don't think that's a real name, says yes. So those were, that was so generally, overwhelmingly, I think most people, yes. But some people have reservations uh, about the environment and the climate. Interesting that people What's said that about here. Now, now um, the vast majority of our cars do not have, have not lived their whole lives here. And the ones yeah. that have are only less, less than 15 years old. Because, you know, if you look at a Lamborghini Espada that was delivered new here in the mid 70s, of which there are some in the yeah. Gulf. Really? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, especially in, Sa in Saudi, well. in Saudi, in Saudi Qatar well. and in, uh, <coughs> and in Bahrain. Um, you know, they, were, they, they got a bit old and then mm. they started, they were stored poorly because people had many, many cars. Uh, too many cars. Too many cars. And so, it, 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 if a car has been here for decades, then usually it's been owned by someone who's a, yeah. a, a local yeah. uh, in Amati. And, and, yeah. and but does that, that so, so for you, as, as somebody who, you know, the purveyor of these things, does that for you set up, set up alarm bells? Yeah, someone said there's a Daytona. It's sitting in the heat. It's if, in the yeah, sun. Someone the rubber is gone. This is gone. You know. If someone offered us a Daytona that's yeah. been here for 40 years, yeah. we'd have massive apprehensions. You're right, yeah. We had to have this massive apprehensions. This is a fact. Yes, Has absolutely. anybody ever got a car here that you thought, wow, that's really well maintained and looked after? Because I haven't seen too many. Too many? No. No. Um, uh, well, from, from, from the 80s, you, you get lucky occasionally, but uh, 70s Well, the two DeLoreans now. were here. They, one of them burnt down, the other one broke down. It was never repaired. Mm. Burnt to a crisp. No, so are we saying, hang on, so are we, have, we, have we just dismissed all classic cars here? All classic cars that have lived here. Originally here. Originally just, here. Just, originally just here them. and in original condition. It, you'd there be are very, You'd there be are. very lucky to find one that's but good. But are they saveable? Because there's... Absolutely. Everything's saveable. But then the, thing is, Bring th money. then the thing is, you don't have the history of the car. What is massively mm. important as well, because the history of a car is like it's, yeah. it's medical history. Yeah. When, you're going to, when, you're going to, when you're going to buy, not necessarily just provenance. Mm. I'm not talking about the previous owners only. I'm also talking about the service history of the car, right. what's been done to it. My Lancia, when I got it, my 1966 Lancia Fulvia, one2 all that came with it was a libretto, which is a, a 40, 50 year old paper mm -hmm. that shows every owner in Italy. Great, but I'd like something more. <laughs> so, so you Rick, because in running condition, so yes, you I, really would have. I'm, I'm keeping every receipt, including tires and batteries mm -hmm. and things like that, because it's, it's, you know, when you go to a doctor, he asks, do you have a history of diabetes mm -hmm. in the family? Things like that. You want to know as much as you can. And cars over here, yes, they're they're savable, but then mm -hmm. you can never, you, you can never get history. that history. People back. don't have that. Yeah. That's the thing. But the thing is, I think it's down to a culture of ownership. I mean, I've, I've kept keeping every, receipts. I mean, I don't have a, a classic car, but I've kept receipts on every car as that I've should. ever owned, and everyone, and I've always yeah. passed on those receipts to whoever I've sold the car exactly. to. I've always done that. And some people have often gone, blimey, you kept all of these? I'm like, yeah, I did, because I felt that was the history this of the is, car. This is great. The, um, the guy who's, who runs the Aston Martin Owners Club, Owners Collection over here, is a guy called Ron Powell. And he has some classic Astons in the UK, 50s and 60s, and he has a couple of modern ones here. Every time he drives one of his cars, and this I think is a bit much, but I'm glad he does it, bless him. 
every time an, uh, a person rides in it for the first time, or even rides in it for the second Don't or third time, he, he documents wow. it. Where he drove from, when the last time what he refueled was, um, if he's even, it, it, it's, it's absolutely insane. He writes all this down, the time, location, place to place, kilometers, how much fuel was used, well, the thing, the thing and is, then he puts it in an Excel sheet. And so the, that's the, great, that's superb. It's I'm not the most I mean, boring man in the world. Well, yeah. you know what? Well, you know what? You could just, go, just, to, you, you could just go to Apple to, to do that because it's like my, my iPhone, every time I park a car at home, and it's not always the same car, it could be a different test car, and I leave it, a little no, no, notification comes up on my phone. You have parked at home. But Google keeps How track do you of know this? How is it doing this? It's like flipping hell. They've got a record of everything. So you know what? You don't need to take a logbook. Just get the records off your damn phone because it probably tells you. No, I don't give money to the Apple Corporation even though I use a Mac. Whatever it's phone you have, it doesn't matter. It's probably you got Google the same Maps. Thing. Mm. Right, you're born. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, uh, every, day, every day it does tell me normal traffic on the way uh, home. Oh, no, it knows, it knows where you live, it knows where mm. you're going, yeah. and it's collecting data. And yeah. eventually it'll be like, do you want to add this, make this location home mm. or work? But, it's, but essentially, going, going back to that, um, yes, the majority of classics that have lived here for a long time will need a significant amount of work most of the time. This will change. This will change. I mean, um, three five fives that were delivered new here. I'm sure in the future the, the cult will change. Eighty percent of the people, people are now from looking here, after them, keeping them in air conditioned garages. Understanding like the that, importance yeah, of records, yeah, yeah. and now the dealerships, everything so is automated, so you can go to Altair and say, oh, no, right, this car, this, okay, this car. So just, so just before, so we've got a couple of minutes left. Just before that, so uh, okay, so we talked about finding a good car, and a lot of these people were concerned about the ownership prospects of a car, of a classic mm. car, now. So either reassure them or put them off. It's up to you. You've got the next two minutes to tell them. Go. Depends on the car. Depends on how how it how it's lived its life. But uh, but yeah, when you buy a classic car, you do have to accept that yes, there are going to be costs unless it's a fresh restoration. Even, even then, even then, it's you, you. You won't be looking at parts. If it's a nut and bolt proper restoration, you're not looking at parts. You're looking at tuning and adjustments. I mean, this five twelve BB, for example, you will not need to replace parts. Essentially, because it's had a fresh nut and bolt restoration. It's Concor, for God's sake. Um, it's so tweak, clean. Tweaks and adjustments, yes. Um, but you know, you have to accept. I mean, you know this. I know this as well. I've just been oh, charged. Oh, do I know it? I've just been charged two thousand five hundred dirhams for some Lancia parts, and that's a second payment I've made in the past month. I made a seven thousand dirham payment recently as well. Yes, they, you know, they can eat up your wallet, but that's why. That's why you did it. Would yes. you spend on your wife? Would you spend on your wife? <clears throat> so, Would you buy a nice pair of shoes? So yeah, there, there are costs, but in the same way that a modern four five eight Italia, yeah, there are also costs there. But there's right? seven year warranty. Parts and service. Four five eights as well, or just four, I thought it's four eight eights. I thought that's when they started. Uh, you would probably know four eight eights. Call four eight eights. But mm. still, now Ferraris are better, best warranties on the planet. Right. M we've BMW. got we've got thirty seconds. Cool. This has been great. Thank you very much. So in thirty seconds, just give us some more news for Delhi Home. I want to change it up a bit. No. <laughs> Episode three of full. No, keep going, keep going. Episode, just need some background music. So episode three of full chat on the road this time. Thanks so much for watching. Please follow us on all of the usual social media: Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Just search for Merging Middle East. And if you're on YouTube, please do like, share, and subscribe. And we will be on the road again. I think next week. I think we're going to uh, Auto Data or something, maybe. Yeah, something a bit more serious. Something a bit more serious, a bit more marketing, and talking about what is actually happening to the market. So your questions for that one please and uh, we'll be back to you soon thanks so much for watching thank you for one. coming guys much appreciated yeah, there you go thank you slowing it down even more to irritate him Tishan. Uh. <laughs> it's all right i like pressing buttons which i'm going to do goodbye